This video will review 10 questions from the Private Pilot Check Ride regarding Flight Navigation, Operations, and Part 91 Regulations. Suggested study resources include Chapter 16 of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, Chapter 4 of the Aeronautical Information Manual, and FAR Part 91. What is a VOR? VOR stands for Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Range. A VOR is a ground-based navigational aid that transmits radials in all directions from 1 degree to 360 degrees. According to the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, the reception range for a VOR is about 40 to 45 miles at an altitude of 1,000 feet above ground level. This distance increases with altitude. The courses projected from a VOR station are referenced to magnetic north. What is GPS and how does it work? GPS stands for Global Positioning System. The GPS navigation system broadcasts a signal that is used by receivers to determine an aircraft's precise position anywhere in the world. The receiver tracks multiple satellites and determines a pseudo-range measurement to determine the user's exact location. When may a pilot intentionally deviate from an ATC clearance or instruction? According to Section 4-4 of the Aeronautical Information Manual, pilots may deviate from an ATC instruction in three scenarios. The first situation is that an amended clearance has been obtained from ATC by the pilot. The second situation is an emergency and the third is in response to a traffic and collision avoidance system resolution advisory. Remember, the pilot in command of an aircraft is directly responsible for and is the final authority regarding the safe operation of an aircraft. What is magnetic variation? Magnetic variation is defined as the angle between true north and magnetic north. Magnetic variation is expressed as east variation or west variation depending upon whether magnetic north is to the east or west of true north. The magnetic north pole is located about 1,300 miles from the geographic or true north pole as illustrated in the picture on the left. The magnetic meridians are illustrated in red and the regular lines of longitude and latitude are shown in blue. This difference in location between the magnetic and true north poles is what causes magnetic variation. Two aircraft are flying to the same airport, and both are about to land. Who has the right of way? According to FAR Part 91.113, when two or more aircraft are approaching an airport for the purpose of landing, the aircraft at the lower altitude has the right of way, but it shall not take advantage of this rule to cut in front of another aircraft, which is on final approach to land or to overtake that aircraft. What is an isogonic line? Isogonic lines are lines that are shown on aeronautical charts to connect points having the same magnetic variation. As previously mentioned, magnetic variation occurs due to the different locations of magnetic and true north. For instance, the isogonic line in this VFR sectional chart near Portland International Airport is showing 15 degrees east. Isogonic lines are illustrated on VFR sectional charts as magenta-dashed lines similar to the one shown in the figure on the left. What is an ELT and what purpose does it serve? ELT stands for Emergency Locator Transmitter and is an electronic battery-operated transmitter that aids in search and rescue efforts if an aircraft is lost or is involved in an accident. According to the Aeronautical Information Manual, the most common operating frequencies for emergency locator transmitters are 121.5 and 243. For the Private Pilot Written Knowledge Test and the Private Pilot Check Ride, Pilots should remember the frequency 121.5 for transmitting during emergency situations. What are the fuel requirements for VFR flight during the day and at night? According to FAR Part 91.151, 
no person may begin a flight in an airplane under VFR conditions unless, considering wind and forecast weather conditions, there is enough fuel to fly to the first point of intended landing and, assuming normal cruising speed during the day, to fly after that for at least 30 minutes, or at night, to fly after that for at least 45 minutes. Remember, just because it's legal doesn't mean it's safe. Pilots should always adhere to proper fuel management techniques and give themselves adequate fuel reserves to avoid fuel exhaustion while in flight. You are on a cross-country flight and you are unable to locate your position. What are the recommended lost procedures? If you get lost while in flight, remember the four C's. Climb, communicate, confess, and comply. Getting lost while in flight can become dangerous especially if low on fuel. It is important to contact the nearest ATC facility if you are unable to locate your position. Climbing to a higher altitude helps to increase radio and navigation reception and radar coverage. Communicating and confessing helps ATC know of your situation and to offer assistance. ATC can offer radar vectors and other assistance to pilots who may be lost. If the situation becomes threatening, a pilot should transmit on frequency 121.5 and set the transponder to 7700, which is the emergency squawk code. What are some considerations when choosing an altitude for a cross-country flight? If asked this question, your pilot examiner will want to know that you are familiar with FAR Part 91.159, which spells out the VFR cruising altitude requirements. If on a magnetic course of 0 to 179 degrees, pilots should choose an odd 1,000-foot MSL altitude plus 500 feet. If on a magnetic course of 180 to 359 degrees, Pilots should choose an even 1,000-foot MSL altitude plus 500 feet. Other factors to consider when choosing a cruising altitude on a VFR flight are terrain, cloud levels, winds aloft forecasts, aircraft performance, fuel burn, airspace, and turbulence. Thank you for watching the video. Please like the video and subscribe for more private pilot check ride questions and other aviation-related educational videos.